What's up, Greg? Welcome back to another episode of this video is not good enough to go on my main channel, so it's gonna go on my second channel. That's what second channels are for, right? For worse content. So, I hope you enjoy this worse content. So, I've seen a lot of posts lately about how, like, being a YouTuber is one of the most desirable careers for young people today. I feel like a lot of people want to be a YouTuber, but so few people know what it's really like to be a YouTuber because it's such a new job. A lot of people don't really even know like what being a professional YouTuber looks like. And so I thought that I would just make a little bit of a, a vlog of sorts on how I uh, like come up with video ideas and then how I go from like an idea to a whole video. How I write out the videos, how I shoot the videos, how I edit the videos, all of that. At least that's my plan as of right now. We'll see how this actually turns out and if this is interesting at all to anybody. So if you've ever been interested in what I do when I'm not filming myself, uh, then here you go. This is me filming myself doing what I do when I don't film myself. Also, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Even though I'm gonna be sharing some of my tips and tricks on how I make videos, chances are if you wanna do this professionally, you're probably going to need a lot deeper knowledge. So for more in-depth training on writing comedy or shooting and editing videos and marketing yourself on YouTube and stuff like that, Skillshare has everything that you would ever want. It's an online learning community. One class I've been really enjoying lately is Ryan Booth's DIY Cinematography, Make Your Video Look Like a Movie Course. This course has a lot of really great tips and tricks on how to use like your camera settings and lighting to make your videos look a lot better without breaking the bank. So if you wanna try out Skillshare, visit the link in my description to get two months for free. Okay, so, um, so the first thing you have to do when you're gonna start on a video is you have to figure out what the video is gonna be about, right? This is gonna be different for everybody because everybody makes different types of videos. For my videos, I generally know what I do because I have an established style, so it's usually not that hard to find an idea. I just sort of have to find weird shit on the internet to talk about. I think one big misconception about how I make videos is that I just look for videos that are bad and that I don't like and that like that's the criteria for how I choose a video to make a topic on or like um, or ads or whatever to make a topic on. I guess I do look for things that are bad but it has to be bad for like other reasons than just this person doesn't know how to make a good video because there's definitely a difference between people like Lele Pons, who has this giant following. She probably makes millions of dollars a year. She has the resources to make like TV quality stuff, but instead she's just like putting out the most like poorly written, ill-conceived ideas that don't make any sense and a lot of times are kind of fucked up. There's a difference between that and someone who is like just picking up a camera for the first time. I don't like making fun of people who are honestly trying their best. That's, I think that's the difference, is that there has to be something besides it's a bad video. Because a bad video could be someone honestly trying their best and they're just, they haven't practiced enough yet or they're just not there yet. So I guess that's sort of what I look for, is content that there's like something actually wrong with it, aside from the fact that it's just bad. Another thing is that it has to be funny. Like I have to be able to easily make jokes about it. People have sent me like things that are so bad that it's just not even funny. Like it's just, it might be like sad or, you know, just might make you angry, but it's like, there's no real way to make jokes about it. So, so that's generally what I'm looking for when I make a video. But now you're probably wondering, well, Danny, how do you find those things? A few ways. The first is just endlessly scrolling Instagram and YouTube. That's like the main way I find things. Whenever I find something on Instagram that I think could be worthy of making a video about, I bookmark it. There's like a bookmarking feature on Instagram. So I have like tons of things bookmarked on Instagram. A lot of them are these are, are those like weird fact memes and stuff. So a lot of it is just from scrolling Instagram. Um, I've been doing this for so long that my explore page is completely fucked now. So it's great for making videos about weird shit because there's weird shit all over my Instagram explore page, but it's not great for uh, enjoying Instagram. Another way I find things is through DMs. A great thing about having a larger audience is that whenever people see weird shit, they immediately think of me because they watch my videos and they send it to me. So that's that's how I found like a decent amount of video ideas or at least like the starting point. And then I'll go to that person's profile and find even weirder things and 
uh, stuff like that. So this week I'm making a video about Ray Diaz. I found this uh, account through the Instagram Explore page. Uh, I mean, you'll see the video when it's posted because this video will probably go up after it. So if you haven't watched it, maybe go watch it so you can see that first and then you can see like the process that I made the video in because I haven't actually recorded the video yet. So now that I have this idea, it's an inkling of an idea, what do I do? Okay, so once I have an idea, then I actually write the video. Uh, I think a lot of people think that I find an Instagram account and then I like just sit down at my desk and just go through and talk about it. I feel like to give good co like commentary and to actually be funny, I need to sit down and actually write out the video idea um, and like actually go through and pick out which videos I'm gonna use. I even write out most of the jokes I use. I would say that my videos are like 70% jokes that I have written and 30% jokes I think of while I'm filming. So I'll like write out all these jokes and then while I'm filming, I'll come up with some too because I'll I'll notice things that I didn't notice while I was watching them and writing this. But this is uh, this is the Ray Diaz video that I have written. There, this whole thing at the top here is an ad. All of this is uh, the Ray Diaz video. So I usually try to shoot for like two pages. This one is almost three pages because I wrote out an ad at the beginning of it. So I usually aim for like two full pages of written out things. So then once I have all that written, then it's time to film. Okay, this is what my filming room looks like. A lot of you have probably already seen this from the video where I decorated this room, but yeah, this is my filming room. Everything that I do, I do on this MacBook. This is what I write my videos on. This is what I edit my videos on. All right, uh, so I'll just show you like what I do as I set up for my videos. First, I turn on my lights. These are LED lights. This one has a softbox thing on it so that it looks better on my face. Now I know what you're thinking, Danny, why do you have a light here when there's literally a window with perfectly good natural light coming out the window? And that's because I'm... I'm just extra, I don't know. I, I don't like how natural light changes. Like if clouds come over, then all of a sudden my video gets dark. So I usually just close these curtains and use this light instead because uh, this will be consistent and that won't. So there's this light and then uh, you're probably thinking that the background is lit by this light um, but you would be wrong. This is gonna sound pretty dumb. I understand that this is probably gonna sound dumb but I turn off this light and then I turn on this light. This light shines up at the ceiling to simulate what this light does, but I like that light better. Next, I get out my microphone and I put it right here. This uh, is a Blue Yeti microphone. It's probably the most popular YouTube microphone. I think pretty much every YouTuber ever has one. I think I've had this microphone for six years. Out of all of the filming equipment that I have and still use, this is the oldest thing. Uh, this is my tripod. I hate this tripod. I thought it would be cool because it's made out of metal so it's really sturdy. But like, it's so heavy because it's made out of metal and like when you try to pick it up, like there's all these spots that want to pinch your fingers. This thing comes unscrewed all the time when I want to just turn it. And uh, yeah, overall I hate it. So I just leave it there and try to touch it as little as possible. But that's where my camera goes. Even just talking about how much I hate this tripod made me so angry that the day that I finished filming this vlog, I went to Best Buy and bought a new tripod, so I have a new tripod now. This is the camera that I use. It's the Canon M50. It has a giant microphone on it, which makes it look really pretty ridiculous, honestly. If you're just starting out making YouTube videos, you do not need to buy this camera, or any camera, probably. I know a lot of YouTubers who started out just filming on their phones, and that, like, that totally works. Okay, so now that I have everything else set up, I open Audacity, that's what I record my audio with. I'll usually keep like my notes off to the side over here, but then put whatever I'm watching on this screen so that it's more like looking at the camera. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I do to get ready to film. Now I'm actually gonna film, so I have to stop vlogging so that I can film my video. All right gang, I finished filming the video, so now it's time to edit. I will now talk a little bit about how I edit my videos. I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos, but I'm pretty sure that almost everything I do could be done in iMovie. I just use Final Cut Pro because it it helps my ego uh, to use software that has Pro in the name. So the first thing I do is I just bring in all of my clips. This video is a total of three clips. Well, three clips that I filmed, and then I'll bring in the all of the videos from Ray Diaz's channel uh, on here in a sec. And then I have uh, the two audio clips 
from recording from that microphone. So the first thing I do is I synchronize all the audio with the video. So I take the first audio clip and the first video clip and then I click synchronize clips and I name it something like clip one. If I put both of these clips into the timeline, uh, you can see that I recorded for a total of 46 minutes. All right guys, well I'm wearing a different shirt now. So you know what that means. It's the next day and I'm done editing. So this is the finished video. It is 16 minutes and 11 seconds long. I have not yet titled this project, uh, but this is the video. Here is the timeline. This is what it looks like when it's all done. So here's like my process when I'm editing a video. When I, when I film the video, I'm basically just like reciting all of the jokes that I have written and I'm watching the video. I'm coming up with more jokes, but it's a lot of me like saying the same thing over and over and over. I think a lot of like really big YouTubers have editors, but I could never, let somebody else watch this video of me just trying to be funny for like an hour, like repeating the same thing over and over uh, until it eventually is funny. What's up, Greg? Welcome back to another episode of What's What's Up, Greg? I hope you're all having a great day. So it starts off with about 45 minutes of that. And then I cut it down to, I think like 14 or 15 minutes. So that's just me cutting out all of the stuff that I'm not gonna use. So it's, it's pretty much just a, a one long video of me um, that's cut up, it's all of the blank spaces taken out, and all of the the takes I'm not gonna use are taken out. That's actually, to me, one of the biggest indicators that somebody's like a beginner YouTuber, is that they don't edit out enough of the blank space between like their lines of dialogue. When you're talking to a camera and you keep having these like awkward pauses between your lines, it totally like slows down the pacing. So I try to cut like as much of that out as possible to make my videos flow as quickly as I can. Then I go through and I do another pass through where I I do all the fancy little editing tricks that you see in my videos and I work on the pacing a lot. I speed things up. I'll show you some stuff that I do. So if you've watched the video, you will probably recognize this part. What a horrible first impression to make on your girlfriend's family, first of all. Her cousin comes to the door and the first thing he says is, you're black. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? So as you can tell, there's some stuff that I did to the video, like enlarging things, that like moving around trick. That's basically just, I cropped it and then like as my head moved, I just keyframed the crop to follow my head. Another thing I do that I think helps with the pacing a lot is overlap the audio. So you can see like here between these two clips, uh, I detached the audio from this clip. So it's down here and I just like overlap it slightly. That helps it like flow better and it almost makes it sound like it's like one natural sentence. Gotta test him. You gotta make sure this guy is good for your cousin. So of course you're gonna make sure. So if it wasn't overlapping like that and I just let it go like that, it would be slightly less quick. You gotta make sure this guy is good for your cousin. So of course you're gonna make I don't know if you can tell what I mean, but it's sort of like a little bit more awkward when there's all that like space. So I like to do that a lot, like overlap the audio and it just makes it flow a lot quicker. Um, most of that stuff is just like what feels right at the time. Um, like when I, when I decide to punch in and stuff, it's, it's mostly just to like emphasize jokes and stuff like that or to make things seem silly. I also add in a decent amount of like sound effects and music and stuff. Most of the music that I get comes from the YouTube music library. It's a service that YouTube has that's totally free. They have like thousands of royalty free like soundtracks that you can use in your videos. So that's where I get most of the music from. And then sound effects I get, I just started using this service service called Soundly. You pay like a monthly subscription and there's like thousands upon thousands of sound effects that you can use in your videos. I like the cartoon ones a lot because they're just so goofy. And you can just drag these like right into the editing software. So a lot of times I will use sound effects to make things seem kind of silly and kind of fun. I mostly just throw them in whenever I think that it could make things funnier. So I go through and I add like all of the Ray Diaz footage in intermixed with mine. The last thing I do after that is I go through and watch the video and I just delete anything that I don't think is funny or useful to the video. Okay, so for some reason the rest of the video is out of focus, so I'm just going to explain very briefly what I do to finish the video. Once I cut all the stuff that I don't like out of the video, it's pretty much ready to go, so I export it, I upload it to YouTube, then I go about making a thumbnail. I feel like thumbnails and titles are often overlooked, but I think they're actually one of the most important parts of the video. They're what is going to get people to click on the video 
in the first place. So you want to make them good and you want to make them enticing for people to look at. So what I generally try to do is make them plant a question in the prospective viewer's mind that only clicking on the video can answer. Usually the question is, what the fuck is going on here? So in the thumbnail that I made for this video, there's quotes around comedy, kind of making it seem like I'm implying whatever I'm going to be watching isn't actually funny. And then there's these two pictures of this guy that make you wonder who the fuck is this guy? Why is he doing that? So the strategy here is to make people wonder what is going on. I have to click on this video to find out. And that's pretty much it. That's how I make a YouTube video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and thought it was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, I could possibly make a follow-up to this video. Or if you have questions about like other aspects of being a YouTuber, feel free to let me know. Okay, bye.